there are several limitations for the shear formula that we need to consider. And one of those is where we have wide sections. So for example, if the width to thickness ratio of the section is equal to 2, you get a 40% error in the prediction of the maximum shear stress and the actual maximum shear stress. But fortunately, when we orient our beams to bend in structures, so for example, if we had a simply supported beam subjected to a point load, then this beam is going to bend about the major axes. And the second moment of area about the major axes is a lot larger than that of the second moment of area about the minor axes. So the beam provides better resistance to bending. And therefore, in this case, the thickness of the shear plane is equal to the thickness of the web. And you have a significantly smaller error in the prediction of the maximum shear stress compared to the wide section here. Now the other limitation is the prediction of the shear stress near junctions. So for example, if you predict the shear stress in the flange near the junction, so your shear plane will look something like this. And similarly, if you predict it in the web near the junction, so your shear plane will be horizontal in this case, you're going to get an abrupt change in the area A dash, which we take where we cut the shear plane. So it looks something like this with the case of the web. And you can also get an abrupt jump in the thickness of the web and flange. But in structures we design for the maximum shear stress, which we know occurs at the centroid. So we don't have to worry about the error between junctions. And the other limitation of the shear formula is that a shear stress is predicted on a free surface. So for example, for this simply supported beam, you'll have reactions of P on 2, which is equal to the shear force at the support. And if you cut out an element from the beam, which looks something like this at the support, then the shear formula would predict the shear stress on the shear plane, which has a thickness equal to this section. So you'd have an opposite shear stress on the bottom surface, to put this section in force equilibrium, which would cause a rotation of this element. And therefore you must have a couple on the front and back surfaces to counteract that rotation. So this effectively predicts that there's a stress on the free surface, but we know that there's no stresses on free surfaces. So for example, this simply supported beam would be sitting on a surface at the bottom of it, so therefore this section here should be a stress-free surface. Please subscribe, like and comment to help me reach more students.